Hello everyone, we're in the studio today to look at our Project 3 demo on emphasis. And uh, for this project, uh, the specifications were to have a 16 by 16 inch piece of corrugated cardboard, uh, and then make a two inch border, and this way you'd have a 12 by 12 inch working space. Uh, so at this point you should have that. Uh, and our next step then uh, would be to figure out a design uh, which would correspond with one of the terms uh, that you were asked to pick. Uh, now that you have uh, selected a word for the type of emphasis that will guide your design concept, it's uh, time to start uh, sketching out some ideas. And to do this, uh, you may want to use little paper shapes. It's very quick and you can remove these or you can draw um, directly to the surface. Um, and uh, after playing for a bit and looking at some possibilities, uh, you may um, find something you like. And once you've done that, uh, then you need to start uh, beginning your work in earnest. Uh, so let's look at that next. At this point in the demo, we're going to look at uh, a few of the materials that are on the material list uh, for this project on emphasis. And the first one we're going to look at is the corrugated cardboard. And to do that, I'm going to use a scrap piece of corrugated cardboard um, to show you uh, why this material uh, may serve as a more multifunctional alternative uh, for your design process for emphasis uh, than just using the illustration board. Uh, so let's check this out real quick and then we'll move on to the next step. So here's our small piece of corrugated cardboard and what I'm going to do real quick is make a few incisions um, on the simple shapes that I have drawn on the surface. And what I'm gonna do is show uh, some of the alternative elements uh, that this material offers uh, that you wouldn't have if we were just using illustration board. Uh, so I'm gonna make a couple uh, incisions on this little rectangle. And uh, I suggest if you choose to work in this way that you have a fresh uh, blade in the knife uh, before you begin cutting. Um, so for this, uh, I'm going to try and do this quickly, but you want to make sure that you do it well. Um, make a little cut here. I don't need to go too deep. I just need to sort of cut through the surface. Make a cut here. And I'm just following my little design. And I'm proceeding with the same care uh, and deliberation that I would use if this was my project material. are my cuts. So this next step's a little tricky. Um, pulling back the uh, outer paper can be kind of a delicate operation. Um, sometimes it's harder uh, and sometimes it's real easy. Uh, so you make your cuts um, into the material you don't need to go too deep and you can then expose uh, this underlying pattern. Uh, it is this underlying pattern which also um, forms a nice directional movement, right? And the sort of linear path of these lines that are stacked, right? Part of the corrugation. Um, but it also changes uh, in value slightly in relationship to the ground. Um, and this is another feature which I think is uh, kind of exceptional for this material. Um, and also that it's going to be used uh, for a project on emphasis. Uh, so this is just one aspect. Um, hopefully, uh, if you want to use this, uh, you'll get something uh, interesting during your design process by having this uh, other sort of element uh, or alternative process in this uh, substrate. We've looked at the corrugated cardboard and examined some of the other possibilities. Uh, that this material provides uh, for our project. Um, our next 
material is frisket, and this is also on the material list for project three. Uh, frisket is basically an easy release, low tack uh, film. Uh, it's see-through, uh, which makes it a nice sort of stenciling uh, tool uh, for paint or airbrush. The next step in our process is to show how uh, the frisket can be used as a design tool. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to put a small piece uh, down on my little design here. And as you will see, uh, the frisket um, is see-through, so I can see my shape, I can see part of my little design. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to remove this section and leave this in this section. And because it's see-through, I should be able to cut through the film uh, and peel away this element uh, and thereby exposing uh, the cardboard surface uh, to the medium I want to use. Uh, so let's look at that next. Now that I have the frisket uh, down over the surface of my cardboard, I'm ready uh, to begin my cut. I put in a new blade uh, to ensure uh, that when I make my incision on the line, uh, it will lift away easily. So let's check this out. And of course, this is only uh, one way to use frisket. Uh, you can just cut shapes out and apply them to the surface uh, and that would work as well because it is essentially uh, just a material um, for masking and stenciling. Okay, so that's one cut. Uh, so essentially, if all the cuts have been made well enough, that should just peel right on out. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we have our piece that's left, right? Um, we have our stencil on the places that we need it. And now, uh, if we want, we can use another medium, preferably uh, acrylic paint in this case, and apply it here. And these two resist areas um, should block in our shape and also protect right the surface around it. So that's how to use frisket. Um, in our next step, we're going to show how to apply the paint or use the paint that is also on the material list uh, and fill in this section. All right, see you then. Hello everybody. Uh, in this last sequence of steps uh, for the Project 3 demo on materials and processes, I'm going to mix uh, the ivory black uh, acrylic paint with the acrylic gel retarder uh, and then I will be painting uh, the small circle uh, that I created for the that. The paint step. has already been added to a piece of wax paper which I'm using uh, for my temporary palette. You can also use a uh, paper plate or disposable plastic uh, picnic uh, plate for your palette. Um, you can also use plexiglass, any sort of smooth surface should work well and then you can scrape the paint off uh, when you're done or just wash it off with soap and water. Um, okay, so I have massaged the paint uh, with my palette knife. This is a great way to mix paint, whether you're mixing for color or just mixing in um, your retarder. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of retarder to this. I don't need much. Um, and then massage this into the paint and since I'm only using black I don't have to worry not too much about how much I get around this little space I just need to make sure it's well mixed before I begin painting uh, this looks pretty good all right so the paint's mixed um, now that I have my paint mixed and the retardant is mixed in I'm ready to apply paint uh, to my little stenciled circle um, this is my flat brush. Um, I have some other size brushes that are also flat brushes. I 
think this size should work fairly well for this size shape. Um, and the process is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna grab a little paint on my brush and then gently apply the paint to the inside of the circle. Uh, even though I cut a stencil and I have, of course, my little edge here and my edge here, uh, I always recommend whether you're using this type of stencil uh, for your process or easy release tape to always brush away from that edge don't brush don't brush into the edge no matter how good your stencil is uh, paint may get underneath the stencil um, so it's always good to sort of lay in uh, your paint very evenly and with uh, attention to craftsmanship um, so this is it i'll continue doing uh, this sort of fill uh, bit by bit layer after layer until i get a nice rich black uh, color in this shape and i'll wait for it to dry a little bit and then peel my stencil up uh, so I will see you in a bit once I'm done and we'll look at the remaining steps um, of this process and material demo. Yeah. All right, see you Coats then. of paint have been applied and now it's time to lift up the stencil and see uh, if this worked well enough. Uh, that looks pretty good. So that's how you use Frisket. Um, and if you do this process, and let's say you see some areas maybe that you didn't quite hit, uh, you can always let this dry, uh, clean your brush off, uh, and then gently go back in and re-hit those edges. Uh, but for the most part, uh, that's a pretty good uh, stenciling job with acrylic paint uh, using the uh, acrylic gel um, retarder. Uh, I have a nice black shape. I can always add some more coats to that. Uh, and I also have a nice edge on that shape. Uh, so this wraps it up for the demo. Um, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing your work. I hope this helped. Have a good night. Bye-bye.